Let's see how to calculate cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency is the running sum of frequencies. The first cumulative frequency is the same the first frequency, which is 1. Now we add 1 to the second frequency 2 and get 3. We add 3 to 4 and get 7. We add 7 to 3 and get 10. So the cumulative frequencies are 1, 3, 7 and 10. Notice that cumulative frequency always increases. If you see it decrease, then you must have done something wrong. What does cumulative frequency mean? It means one value is less than 3, 3 values are less than 8, 7 values are less than 16, and 10 values are less than 18. With cumulative frequencies ready, we can draw the cumulative frequency graph now. We need to connect several points with a smooth curve. Those points are the lowest boundary, 0, and the upper boundary, cumulative frequency of each class. The lowest boundary is 1. So the first point is 1, 0. Now let's look at the first class. The upper boundary is 3, and the cumulative frequency is 1. So the second point is 3, 1. The upper boundary of the second class is 8, and the cumulative frequency is 3. So the third point is 8, 3. We can construct the remaining two points the same way. Now we have five points for four classes. There is always one more point than the number of classes. Another way to construct these points is to put all boundaries in the x coordinate. The boundaries are 1, 3, 8, 16, 18. So we have five points with those numbers as the x coordinates. Then we put 0 in the first point's y coordinate, and cumulative frequency in the rest. So the rest of the y coordinates are 1, 3, 7, 10. Now we can connect these five points with a smooth curve. Remember to use a smooth curve, not straight lines. The y axis is always cumulative frequency CF. The x axis is whatever the data represents. Here it is length. What does this graph tell us? Look at the first point. We can see that there's no value less than 1. And look at the third point 8, 3. If we draw two lines from the point to touch the x and y axis, we can see that there are three values less than 8. It reflects exactly what the cumulative frequency table tells us. We know cumulative frequency always increases. So the graph will always rise too. If you see it go down, you must have done something wrong. From the cumulative frequency graph, we can find measures of the data set. First, let's find the median. Median divides the data set in half. We know the total number of values, n, is 10. Therefore, we need to find the x value when y is equal to half n, 5. We locate 5 on the y axis, draw a horizontal line to hit the curve, and draw a vertical line to hit the x axis. This number is the median. It is approximately 13.1. Similarly, to find the lower quartile, we locate quarter n, 2.5, on the y axis, and find its corresponding x coordinate on the curve. It is approximately 6.6. .6. To find the upper quartile, we locate 3 quarters of n, 7.5, on the y axis, and find its corresponding x coordinate on the curve. It is approximately 16.4. We can also find percentile. 90 percentile means 90% of values are smaller than this value. 90% of 10 is 9. So we need to find the x coordinate on the curve when y is 9. We can see that the 90 percentile is 17.3. Now we have been finding x for y. We can also answer greater than or less than questions by finding y for x. For example, how many values are greater than 10? We find 10 on the x-axis, draw a vertical line to hit the curve, and a horizontal line to hit the y-axis. It is 3.8, which means the cumulative frequency is 3.8. Therefore, there are 3 values less than 10. The total number is 10. So 7 values are greater than 10. Remember, these are all estimates and not accurate values. 
we know that we can find the estimated median, LQ, and UQ from the cumulative frequency graph. We also know the minimum and maximum value, 1 and 18. So we can sketch the box and whisker plot from these. The box and the inside line are lined up with LQ, UQ, and the median. The whiskers extend from the minimum to LQ, and the maximum to UQ. If we know the total number of values, n, we can also draw a cumulative frequency graph from the box and whisker plot. We can read the five values from box and whisker, and they are the x coordinates. If we know n, the y coordinates are 0, quarter n, half n, three quarters of n, and n. For n equals 10, they are 0, 2.5, 5, 7.5, and 10. Once we have those fives points, we can connect them with a smooth curve to get the cumulative frequency graph. Therefore, we can convert between cumulative frequency graph and box and whisker plot. Cumulative frequency graph translates frequency table to a visual presentation and shows the distribution of group data. In the example, we gave the total number of values, n, as 10 only. But group data usually has a large n, because this is the purpose of grouping data together. We don't want to see the raw data because there's too much of it. Cumulative frequency graph gives us an easy view of a large amount of data. However, the curve is an approximation, and those measures you read from the graph are also estimates. They only give you a rough idea and are not accurate. In this class, we learned how to draw cumulative frequency graphs. Cumulative frequency is running sum of frequencies. To draw a cumulative frequency graph, you connect lowest boundary, 0, and all upper boundary, CF, with a smooth curve. You can find measures by reading the x coordinate of a point on the cumulative frequency graph with corresponding y coordinate. Cumulative frequency graph and box and whisker plot can be converted to each other if n is given.